Good morning everybody. I hope you had a lovely Christmas and I just want to wish you a happy new year. We're going to begin our service today by singing the song Bless the Lord O My Soul. Please do sing with me. Sing like never before. Oh, my. 
Good morning and welcome to our online service. I want to take this opportunity to trust that you will have a blessed 2022. I pray that you will prosper in your relationship with God and that you will grow in your love for Him and get to know Him in new dimensions. This morning I want to share a few thoughts from the book of Joshua. And my key thought today is we need to move on and keep pressing forward. Let's read Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 to 9. After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River and into the land that I am giving them. I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set your foot, you will be on land that I have given you, from the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live, for I am with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you. I will not abandon you. Be strong and courageous, For you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give to them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study the book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so that you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You know, the new year always gives us an opportunity for a new start. Psychologically, we can put the past year behind us And we can start afresh. 
And we need to know that God is a God of new beginnings. And the new year is a wonderful time for us to decide, to move on, to press forward in our relationship with God, to press forward and move on in our very lives. In this text, it's a time when the children of Israel are about to have a new start. Moses had led them for 40 years, but now he was dead. In fact, all of the older generation had died off apart from Joshua and Caleb. For 40 years, Moses had been leading these people. And the majority of that time, they were in the desert, mainly because of their disobedience. Now at last, Joshua received marching orders. The book of of Joshua starts with a bang. It says, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go. That is the way to start have a new beginning. The message version, version puts it like this. Moses, my servant, is dead, so get going. As we enter this new year, we can learn a lot about new beginnings, about moving on, about pressing forward. And the first lesson that we learn from this passage of Scripture is that the past is behind us. Joshua had faced a massive paradigm shift. And all the people were going to need to face this paradigm shift as well. It was big. It had major implications. They had to move from being nomads to landowners. They they were soon going to leave their tents and they were going to occupy homes. They would stop eating manna and they would start enjoying harvested crops that others had planted. The whole mentality of defense mode would need to change to an offensive mode. For 40 years, they had been walking around trying to avoid trouble wherever they could. Now it was time to face trouble and head forward and move on as warriors. It was time to leave their old slave days behind them, far behind them, and to enjoy the freedom of the land that God had given them, a land flowing with milk and honey. We need to understand Moses was dead. But God's purposes for the children of Israel were very much alive. God's purposes for each one of our lives are very much alive. This is no time for the children of Israel to stand around grieving. It's not a time for them to be standing, reminiscing the good old days, or thinking about the regrets they had and all the what-ifs in the past 40 years. It was not a time to think about the past. It was time to think about the future, to move on, to press forward. I love the inscription that is on John Wesley's grave. And it says, God buries his workmen, but his work goes on. The plans and purposes of God can't be thwarted. God's work continues. At the beginning of this new year, maybe their thoughts of the old year that are holding you back. What happened last year? It's easy to get bogged down with regrets over things that we can't change. Maybe you look at some of the wrong steps you took last year. Maybe you suffered some painful losses last year. Maybe someone let you down in a big way. Maybe you made an incorrect decision that had great implications. Look, we've all suffered this year in many different ways, and particularly through this uh, COVID situation. There's been many, many challenges for us, but it's time to listen to Joshua's marching orders. The past is gone. Now arise and go into this new year. Move on. Press forward. Years ago, I read the story of a man who had owned a farm for many, many years. And a thunderstorm passed through their area and an old pear tree in their backyard was uprooted and knocked over. And this old man was very disappointed. The family had lived for, at this property for six generations. This grandfather had climbed that tree. Each year he had picked fruit from that tree. Everybody spoke about that tree. It was in the history of the family, and now it was gone. And he was sorry that it was gone. 
And a neighbor came past and uh, said to him, you know, John, I'm so sorry that your old pear tree is blown down. He said, yeah, I'm sorry too. It was a real uh, important part of my past. And then the neighbor said to him, well, what are you going to do? And he paused for a moment and thought, said, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick all the fruit off the tree and then I'm going to burn what is left. And I think there's a lot of wisdom in what this farmer had to say. We can take lessons from the past and we should learn lessons from the past. We should enjoy what we can use from the past. And then get rid of the rest. Pick the fruit and burn the rest. You know, we we may need to grieve over the past. We can even rejoice over the past. But there is no point in longing for the past. I've seen many churches where people are prone to continually look back to their glorious past. And they're so caught up reminiscing about the past or trying to recreate the past that they don't give any thought to the future. God has great plans for all these churches, but many of them have not moved forward because they're living in the past. They're not ready to move on and press forward. And any church that gives up on the future in order to try and hang on to the past is doomed to failure. Eventually that church is going to fizzle out and die. You've heard me say it many times before, and so I'll say it again this morning. If we are holding on to the past, there is no way that we can have outstretched hands that are open and ready to receive for what God has for us in the future. Here at Union Church, we need to heed the marching orders of Joshua. The past is gone. Now let's get going into God's plan for our church in 2022. And each member of the church, everybody listening this morning, I want to say to you, the past is gone. There's nothing you can do to change it. But what you can do is prepare yourself for the future. What has God got for you in 2022? Are you going to move on? Are you going to press forward? I'm often reminded of the words of Paul in Philippians chapter 3 reading from verse 12. Let me read these verses. I don't mean to say that I've already achieved all these things or that I've already reached perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I haven't achieved it all, but I focus on one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what is ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. Paul is saying here, I forget the past. I move on and I press forward because I know God has got so much more for me. And when we do that in 2022, the past is gone. Let's forget it. Let's press on. Let's move forward and let's embrace what God has for us. The second lesson that we learn from this chapter, which comes across very clearly in the nine verses that I read to you, is the Lord is with us. Joshua 1 9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Strong and courageous is quite easy when you embrace the latter part of that verse. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua and Caleb were two men who had demonstrated their faith in the promises of God. Forty years earlier, they had been part of a group of spies who went behind enemy lines into the promised land to spy out the land. Out of the 12 spies that were sent, 10 came back terrified. They said, the land is full of giants. Compared to them, we look like grasshoppers. It was only Joshua and Caleb who showed strength and courage. They said, let's go take the land. The Lord is with us. But that minority report 
got lost in all the doom and gloom of those faithless men who didn't focus on their great God, but rather focused on the giants. In 2022, don't focus on the giants. Focus on your great, amazing God. It's quite ironic that the children of Israel had doubted the power of God, yet the heathen nations around them were terrified of their powerful God. You remember later on in Joshua, once again, they send spies out into the promised land to scout out the land. And while they're there, they get to Jericho and they stay with a woman named Rahab. And you can read in Joshua 2 from verse 9 to 11 what she says to them. She says this, I know that the Lord has given you this this land to you. A great fear of you has fallen on us so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did to Sion and Og, the kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan, whom were completely destroyed. When we heard of it, our hearts melted and everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on earth below. But unfortunately, the Israelites hadn't held on to that truth. The heathen had seen that. Because of their unbelief, they wasted 40 years wandering around in the wilderness. While all the time they're wandering around, the Canaanites are actually terrified of them trembling in fear. The heathens knew who the Lord was. He had parted the Red Sea. They knew he had all the power in heaven above and on earth below. Now, when you look ahead into this new year, you may see some fierce giants blocking your path. We've seen in our church many who in this past year have suffered with some very serious health conditions And you might be looking into this new year, still facing those same challenges. For all of us, they're going to be major challenges in 2022. But God might be calling some of you even into new areas of ministry. And you're afraid because you've got to do something you've never done before. Whatever obstacles stand in your way in 2022, Remember Joshua's orders from the Lord. Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. He says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. That's the promise of our God. Jesus says, I will be with you until the end of the age. He's with us. He's walking with us. We're not alone. We face 2022 in the power of the Holy Spirit because we are not alone. God is with us. And then the third thing that I want to speak about this morning is that when we obey and when we follow after God and move forward, miracles will happen. Miracles will follow our obedience. There was a definite change that came when the leadership mantle passed from Moses onto Joshua. During the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, Israel saw God's miracles every single day. Now, I know in some sense we see miracles every single day as well. But I think in some way they had become accustomed to uh, all the miracles that God had done. God had guided them uh, with a cloud during the day and fire at night. He had opened the Red Sea for them. He had brought the waters back in the Red Sea to drown the Egyptians. Every single day, they had the miracle of manna where God provided for them. When they wanted more, God sent quail. For 40 years, their clothes and their shoes never wore out. It was just an ongoing miracle. And these miracles were God's way of showing them they could put their trust in him. He was trustworthy. He is faithful. And under the leadership of Moses, in some sense, these people didn't have to step out in faith because they could see God's presence with their eyes every single day. The food was there. They closed and we're out. God provided for them. But when Joshua came along, things changed somewhat. The cloud Uh, and the pillar of fire were gone. 
there was no more manna appearing in the mornings. And all of a sudden, there were jobs for cobblers and seamstresses because clothes were beginning to wear out and shoes were wearing out. When Joshua obeyed and in faith they moved forward, God performed miracles. God called Joshua to take the children of Israel across the Jordan and they stood facing the Jordan. They had take that, taken that step of faith and God once again parts the waters and they can cross over. God was looking for faith and obedience. And we read that in verse 8. Obey, obey, be careful to obey all the commands of the law. Obey what your God is saying to you. You know, look at the very first battle they had to face. We've all heard of it. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho and the walls came tumbling down. God won the battle for them with an amazing miracle. But that miracle came after they showed their faith and they obeyed. For seven days, they marched silently around the city. Then on the seventh day, they marched around seven times, still silently. All this was a big act of faith and obedience. They must have wondered what they were doing, why they were doing that. It wasn't like it was some great battle strategy that was known to man. But at the end of the seventh time around, when they obeyed those final instructions, and when they sounded the trumpets and the people shouted, the walls collapsed and every man could go straight into the city and they took the city of Joshua, of Jericho. We read that in Joshua 6.20. God certainly can perform miracles at any time he chooses. And I think sometimes we're not even aware of the amazing miracles that God performs in our lives. But more often than not, his miracle will come after we step out in active faith. I read the story this week of a man who wanted to demonstrate his faith in a miracle, um, powerful God. And he came forward in church one Sunday and declared that from that day onwards, he was simply going to trust God and ask God to provide for him. He would put his faith in God alone. And so he quit a very high ranking job in a company and uh, soon he had to move out of a very posh neighborhood into a poor neighborhood because his finances were beginning to dry up. Time went by and he ran low on food. And on the first night, he prayed that God would send him food. He prayed earnestly. He said, God, I'm trusting you. I'm putting my faith in you. The next morning, he went outside, looked outside, looked on the ground. There was no food to be seen. And so he thought, well, maybe I haven't prayed fervently enough. So he dedicated the second day to pray more for food. And still he came out the next day. There was no food to be seen anywhere. Again, he prayed all day long and uh, he was certain he would walk out and there would be food outside for him. But again, the food wasn't there. He was getting absolutely desperate. And he cried out to God. He said, God, I'm going to die of hunger. And when he had prayed all that he could pray, he fell back on his bed. And in that silence in his room, he heard a small voice calling his name. And he said, I'm here, Lord. Are you finally answering my prayer? I've been answering your prayer all along, the voice replied. You've just been looking in the wrong direction. What do you mean, Lord? He asked in confusion. Walk outside, commanded the voice. He walked outside and looked down at the dirty porch, but he saw no food there. There's nothing there, he said, Lord. You're looking in the wrong direction. He looked up to the sky, but he only saw clouds. I still don't see any food, Lord. And then the Lord said to him, look straight ahead of you. And he looked straight ahead, and there was a sign pasted on the building across the street. Laborers wanted. Lunch will be provided. You know, if you want to know what God has for you in this coming year, what the next step is, You've simply got to look straight ahead. You don't have to be looking all around. Just look straight ahead. Do you see a job that needs to be done? Then do it, friends. If someone needs prayer and you see them in need, then pray for them. If someone needs money and you have the money to to give to them, give that to them. 
If the trash can's full, well then go and empty it. If the kitchen needs to be cleaned, clean it. If the kids need some attention, then give them attention. If the church needs a driver, well then drive for the church. If a class needs a teacher, teach that class. If something is broken, then fix it. When you see a need and you have the ability to fill it, get busy filling that need. And I'm telling you, when you do that, miracles will follow. When you are obedient and you show faith in God, he will follow by doing supernatural things in your life. I remember at one time years ago, Cara and I were saving for a vehicle and uh, we certainly didn't have enough money in the bank to buy a vehicle, but we were saving. And then in the ministry we were working for, there was a great need. Uh, In our chapel, we needed to put up some roofing. And uh, I started to ask people and make appeals for people to assist us with that roof. And then I remember God very distinctly saying to me, you've got money in your bank account. And so we spoke about it and we decided that we would give that money towards the roof for the chapel. We gave that money, and as we acted in faith and obedience, so God miraculously provided for us. And a car was provided for us. Not that It wasn't our own vehicle. It was a car we could use. But that car, for all the years we needed it, was serviced and looked after in a far better way than we could have ever done with our own resources. You see, when you obey and step out in faith, God will follow with miracles. The world says to us, show me and I will believe. But God says, believe and I will show you. His miracles will always follow when we step out in faith. Step out in faith in 2022. As we come to an end, let me say this to you. In this new year, let's determine to move forward, to press on in God. We have plenty of great days in the past that we can look back on. We've made many mistakes in the past as well. But like Joshua, our marching orders are get going. The past is behind you. Start a new chapter. You're going to have some impressive obstacles in your way when you start a new chapter. You're going to have some big, mean giants in your path. And sometimes you're going to feel like a grasshopper in comparison to your problems. But you can be strong and courageous because you know the Lord your God is with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will be with you to the end of the age. We can have full confidence that if we fight the battles God calls us to win, and if we meet the needs that he puts in front of us, then miracles will follow us. When we obey and move out in faith, we will see miracles. And that's my prayer for you in 2022. May the Lord richly bless you. Very happy Sunday morning to dear brothers and sisters and a happy new year to you. Welcome back to the Lord's table. We just heard an amazing message of three truths that will help us to walk forward in 2022. The first, knowing that we must leave the past in the past. 2021 was a year filled with ups and downs for my family, and I'm sure you can say the same. We can see lessons that God taught us. We can see how he broke us and rebuilt us. We can look back and see his faithfulness, and yet we must remember that those things are in the past. The Bible says that we're not promised tomorrow. We have today and today only, so let us be faithful in what God has given us, knowing that the second truth, that he is with us. His presence is with us, and he promises to never leave us nor forsake us. And so in that truth, we can walk forward in obedience and see miraculous things working in us and through us and around us for his glory. 
you know, I was struck throughout this passage. We saw God continue to say, do not fear, be strong. The land is yours. It's yours. I've given it to you. Take it. Promise after promise. That's yours. Take it. But there are conditions. There are conditions to those promises. And you know, in our salvation, we know that's a work of God alone. God has given us salvation. He has granted us this faith, this ability to believe. And so we praise him for his work on the cross. Our salvation is truly a gift of his alone. And yet we see this other truth in scripture that the walk of the Christian life, it's an invitation to a relationship, a partnership. It's us not just saying, it's us doing, it's us believing. And so yes, we see God's promises He's telling the people of Israel, I've given you the land, but the condition is you must not fear. You must be strong and courageous. You must take it. He even says in verse seven, you must not go from the left or to the right of the law that my servant Moses gave to you in order that you might have success. And although we are no longer under the Old Testament law, the principle is the same. We are still been given the word of God. Jesus says, if you love me, obey my commands. And so we have that principle of, if we are to have success in the life that God has given us, we must stay faithful to the word he's entrusted to us and not turn from the left or to the right of it. And so I want to challenge you today, dear brothers and sisters, as we step into 2022, see that what it is that God has entrusted something in us and we have a partnership with the Holy Spirit walking these truths out every day. So don't turn from the left or to the right from what he's revealed in his word so that we may have success in our lives, not just prosperity personally, but success in seeing the kingdom of God being built around us because he's called us and he wants to use us to bring about his kingdom and his glory. And we know that we have success as we walk in this life. Success has already been purchased for us on the cross. That's what we celebrate every week by coming to the table, that we walk in victory because victory was won on Calvary. And it's in that mindset that we come to the table now. Jesus, on the night he was betrayed with his disciples, took bread. He broke it and gave thanks. And he said to them, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. In like manner, he took the cup, he said, this is my blood shed for you, the new covenant, take and drink. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you for another year we can look back and see your faithfulness. We thank you for another day that we can proclaim your goodness. We thank you for the truth that you are with us and that you have promised good things for us. Help us to be obedient. And Lord, we even know that we can't even do that in and of our own strength. We cling to your power that works in us every day. Less of us, more of you. May you work in us so you may work through us to reach those around us for your glory, for your honor, for your praise. May the world see your excellencies in our lives because of what you have done for us. May we be a blessing to those around us because you have blessed us, Jesus. And may we return, bless your name, for you are so worthy. We thank you for this new day and this new year, another opportunity to proclaim your name among the nations. And we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Have a wonderful week, Union Church. Have a wonderful year. Be blessed. into tomorrow I prophesy into tomorrow